Welcome to Warblog. Um, today I'm going to look at a game I did a long time ago. <coughs> I didn't really sort of figure on doing this, but um, um jeeb. There we go. Man Beach. Okay, where's the one I was looking for? Um, let's just do that. Come on. Man Beach. Just the way they say it. We've actually got two scenarios. So we've got the 2016 scenario. I don't know what happens here, but when ISIS are in Manju, it looks like. Um, and I'm pretty sure that these YPG elements with US support took it. So, yeah, so that's that. But the situation in 2018 was that the, um, the FSA, which are basically the Turkish backed Sort of forces in that area were mounting to take this. It says Turkish backed Free Syrian Army prepare to move on Manju against the YPG. Well, this is 2018. Um, I don't really have the exact date there. Um, so it's last year. But the thing is, the reason I'm just pulling this out is because they are saying the same thing again. And they're also saying that there are Turkish forces. But I was assuming the front line is probably fairly similar. And instead of making another scenario, which I might do, um, you know, depending on what they do, because at the moment it's just sort of like, you know, they're building up, I thought I would um, just play this. I don't know if I've played this before. Um, I was just going to play a random game. I'm a bit busy, but... Um, so, this is it. So this is the game we're looking at. So obviously they've got Turkish support. I imagine it'll be a walkover, really. A big stack of something there. There is a big stack, isn't there? Lots of artillery. I think this is probably there for um, some sort of, you know, deployment. Whoever's playing the, um, the the YPG would probably be looking at that as something that they can. Oh, yeah, Arima. So we've got that place there. Plenty of artillery. What's this? Artillery and air defence. Infantry. So everything else is just sort of frontline stuff with this road. So essentially, um, well, the, the Turkish player is going to go first. And to be quite honest, I think you probably have to play it through to get an idea of how it's going to work and then develop an ideal strategy. But I'm sort of thinking the key thing will be to get these stacks as soon as possible. Um, that's more than it's down there. Uh, I don't think that's such a big map. Um, so I would be I would be sort of thinking you know driving through here and Somehow driving through here. And getting to those as quickly as possible, not worrying about these too much. But the thing is, that's probably, now that we know that, <laughs> we can easily predict that as the other player. Um, and so the other player might then sort of fall back with their artillery to sort of positions like that. You know, so there's no guarantee that all this artillery, which is what we're after, will be there. Because that's the only thing that's really going to sort of damage these forces. They can't really counterattack. I mean, they could, but they, they'll be difficult counterattacks. 
And I think this front, this line will just be falling back to create the worst possible opportunities. But you know, there's going to be plenty of opportunities, it's just limiting them. Um, and I'm not sure where they would fall back. YPG if they had to, but the thing is, I'm not sure whether this will happen because you know the YPG are. I can never remember exactly what's what, but they're fairly heavily supported by the US from memory. The full extent of that I don't know, but I was reading just the other day that or yesterday or this morning that um, the US, the, 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 the Turkish are building up. And the US has sent their ambassador to speak to the Turkish. You know, so the diplomatic efforts sort of, you know, in play, um, you know, presumably on the grounds that the US have a particular interest in sort of this not happening, um, not just because they don't want it happening, but, you know, if it does, they, they might support these units. And anyway, I was talking about how they've sort of received like, you know, 1,200 lorries of aid and 250 of them full of weapons and arms and things from the Americans and so that you know these are not sort of you know rebels with spears and knives they've got probably quite a lot of the latest technology to help them resist this kind of advance um, so we'll just start off so what I'm going to try and do is is push straight through here and straight through here and get there as quickly as I can and just see what the options are on that. So I mean, obviously, the, the, the fastest way through, well, there's going to be a twofold on this. Here, I think it's going to be easier because we've got a bit of a wider gap. But somehow, well, this road is blocked, and so is this one. So, but if we could possibly take these two hexes here first, I think that that would be the way through and what I'm sort of thinking is not just taking them but pushing them out so we leave something so for example we could move this stack because we think well you know there's a lot in there we could use this stack to actually do the assault here and here so we can use this stack here to push against that and hopefully move it out the way and this uh, uh, and to push against that like that and then if we can push them out of the way in some significant fashion we can open up this gap so that then these units can then just go down here like that now if they can go four hexes one two three Four, they could probably get to that hex there. You know, if we can get to that hex with large forces and possibly even this one and this one, that will give us a serious front line against that the following turn. So maybe the first thing to sort of consider is where is the FSA artillery? So that's all stuff and stuff. Oh my. Mechanized, mechanized. It looks like it just plonk things on, you know, sort of as a <laughs> massive stack there. Now they could probably move one, two, three, four, five. So a bit out of range, but we could probably. I have this battery here and they could probably all fire on that. Remembering also I think we've got some Turkish air power. So we spent the sort of first period bombarding this, leaving him with one depression and him with 4.8, which is not terrible. And we're going to try and move him well, we should have moved them all there actually, but no, the road movement wasn't really that good. 
two points of it as well, I think. One and seven. Okay, so what have we got here? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we can possibly try and get there. Before we move in, because what I want to do is make sure we've got the road clear. Because if I move four in there, they won't be able to go through there. So basically, if I move two there, two there, that should work. So the question is, can I get there? Can I get to that hex there? And I can't, anyway. But if I put two there and two there, so what I'm going to do. Is move two hips, two two in there, and two in there. The reason being because I don't want to leave them so stacked that I can't then pass these units through like that to the target hex. So that's what we're trying to do. And the movement that we've got left. So we could probably move a bit further than that. Gain something along the road. Okay, so that's sort of our limits there. So if we're at 2.25 there, these ones will be able to do the same route and move into there, giving us both of these hexes. So basically what we want to do here is attack that with 16 versus probably about 4, so it'll probably be about 4 to 1. Do we want to use an air power on it? I think not. Use air power on that. So this is it. This is the big sort of, can we do this? Let me just have a quick look at what else could support this actually. Because he could possibly come down onto this. So if I can push that out of the way, these can come down on there. See, so there's a possibility actually that I can put some armoring on that. If I put one armored unit in, but I want to be exploiting of that. So this is the question you see. If I succeed that's fine. If I fail the whole thing goes pear shaped. Um, let's try it. Huh. Good odds, good die roll. So we succeeded. And they can't move. We're possibly we're going to move a little bit. So depression 4 and depression 10. So what we could possibly do is continue that attack. It was an exchange, but they um, it caused a morale check. So that means we're not really better placed at all, because there's still two zones of control. Okay. So what we really need to do is push this one out of the way. Get it four. I could try and push him out and bring some of these forces in to support that. Okay, 
I'm not going to move into there because that at least opens that up as a zone of control. If he moves into there and retreats into there, it's actually better than forcing into there because it'll still have a zone of control in there. So I'm going to not take that hex. I'm only going to attack the three because this isn't sort of, I hope this works, but it's not critical. I have attack. Yeah, so that's pushed him back into the hex I wanted him to go in, so that's good. And that leaves these three to move. He's still got a bit of movement, so I want to push these up against this. So that gives us a lot more against this stack. And again, I should have maybe not moved him into there, because I want it, if he retreats to there, it would be great. If he retreats to there, it's not so great, but the difference is sort of negligible. Okay. It's going to move to there, isn't it? I'm not going to get eliminations on this. Do I want more movement on that? Possibly. So that's how our attack's gone in. So we really don't have... It's really interesting how that line has actually maintained itself through no... no sort of... doing of mine, my, myself, I'll explain. You can probably see, but that we've, we've had some clear attacks. The front line is still fairly effective. I mean, they've got a front line. We just push the units back, and it doesn't always work like that. But I think that's quite an interesting sort of observation as to how this game works. I mean, it's not AI, but you know, the falling back like they did. You know, it just seems to complement what you might expect at the very least, and you know, at, 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 you know almost at a better level to, to work quite well. But it doesn't look like we'll be able to do exactly what I wanted. And I think this is one of the interesting things about this game. It sets the limits of, you know, how far you can think ahead. Now, I have never been very good at chess. I used to think I was, and I think that was one of the fallacies. And I think, you know. I can think about two moves ahead, possibly three, and then I start to get a bit confused. And I think, you know, what you're trying to do here is think beyond all these complex maneuvers of what we can now do with this unit. So the thing is, we wanted to get to that hex, so I don't think we've really failed too much. We wanted to get to this hex, but I think, in, you know, we're only going to be able to get to these two hexes with this stack here which I don't think is, is too much of a failure really you, you know considering it's war and you, don't, you can't really predict what's going to happen but whatever it means is we're sort of you know we're going to get pounded by this artillery one way or another unless there is still some scope
and that scope is there is something, let me guess we can get that and how can we get it morale check question 7, this is the one question 7, 20% chance of routing Nine point five. No, you know it is ground. Is there anything else we can bring to bear on that? There is actually. Again, can you guess? <laughs> oh, what fun! Um, what can we do? So it's not ideal, but it's actually not that terrible either. I mean, this is going to be a 7 to 1. Eliminated. Giving us no movement left at all. Let's do that. So, oh, now that was pretty stupid moving now, as soon as I could. Okay, so that is fantastic. I mean, that is, you know, that, that sort of given us a perfect example of what was intended. So we've actually, well, the front line was something like that obviously and we've broken through quite clearly and dramatically like that to threaten Nanjib Obviously we're trying to do the same thing here, really only here only so that we can stop his artillery from being so effective. Now we're going to receive this artillery, but what's it going to fire at? You know, it's only got four or three rounds of doing some significant damage. Yeah, I do enjoy these games. I will just make a little note there that I've um, yesterday I found a game called Free Sue, and it's basically Civilization. I used to play that so much, and I still like it. And I've played it three sessions now, and each one takes like over an hour. Not so much over an hour. I mean, I haven't finished any games. I only just managed to start them and get into them. But they just eat time up, and you don't learn anything. It's just this repetitive. You get into this sort of mantra of you're just doing things, just moving things around, you know what's looking to be done and, and when I played it I actually got a little frustrated and angry that it was eating so much time and I wasn't learning anything, I was just figuring everything out and I just, it just keeps coming back to sort of well why is this game so good and, and you know this is a thinking game you know in Civilization which is a game and you say oh do you want Civilization? Oh, yeah, it's, it's a real game, a real strategy game, it's not, it's pure old game of repetitive processing and with this you do have to sort of think it's not so much that civilization doesn't have any benefits because I played it so much and I still like it, it you know but I just wanted to sort of throw that in there because I don't want to sort of drag this out into sort of a Civ bashing video because I really like it but um, it did sort of make me realize that you know in 24 minutes we've achieved so much here mentally um, you know, sort of thinking, well, how can we do this? Thinking, analytical thinking, 
you know, that so all that sort of stuff. And then 25 minutes in Civ, you, you just sort of spend it moving workers around, building roads and irrigation, which is what I do a lot of, and building whatever, exploring and stuff, and there's no real sense of anything other than you just, it's a, it's a mental sort of compulsion, to, and you just keep going, and as it gets bigger and bigger, and it's just massive, and I could easily spend you know, I did spend days on civilization, so I can remember spending like two or three days. I put a pizza on, go back, next time I look up, it was on fire. You know, it was just charcoal. <laughs> That's how quickly time goes, you just don't notice what's happening. Whereas here, we've had 25 minutes, but to end it there with a sort of very complete sort of thing that's happened and I think that's one of the things that I think is important about war games to some extent and a lot of people they have these monster games like war in the east and west or whatever and they're just so big that they're just like civ they just by default they're going to take up hours and hours. Oh it's a four hundred hour game. Why? You know, I mean it's too much I think. Uh, especially for people like me who don't have time. I I spent too much time bashing Civ. I just wanted to make that point of reference. I'm going to try and do this one. I'm going to leave it. Um, but I'm still going to try and get there. So I'm going to play the same sort of strategy. But we don't have any artillery support. But this is less critical. I think getting down to the main jib is the important thing. Um, I want to leave these units as my forward thing. Well, to be quiet, so I don't think that's going to happen. We should be able to go one, two, three, four. If we can push these back to there. I'm just going to just, I'm not really going to think too much about this. So these are my two wedges. I can get these down this road. What's that now? Three. Oh, one, two. I'm not going to get there at all. It's a nice stack that's near the front line. Maybe I should have brought them down this way. Is that going to be enough to just push this back? I'm going to push three and three. Let's try this. This is just the minimum I think that I might need for success. Six to one, that's pretty good. So now we've now broken that line. Let's see what we can do here. Well, we've eliminated one of them. We push the other one back. So what's he on? We've got one movement. He's got one. Just the road move right down to there. So 
So I think we've achieved what we wanted to on this front almost exactly as we anticipated. And this little stack, I think we can So I'm not going to go there, but i back there. He could go there, which would be a bit of a pain. But I think I will do this. Go three or four to one. Five to one. So he has pushed him back where I didn't want him to go. But, it's not terrible. Because this will definitely push him in the right direction if it doesn't eliminate him. Okay. So we've now truly broken through that line as well. So that's pretty much it for the initial thrust. Everything else is pretty much stopped. So it's so we don't have before and afters because um, we have to sort of draw this line and it was sort of like that and it's now like this. So we've broken through there, then we've broken through there, just as I planned. Okay, and that's just one turn. So, and I don't think there's any real reason to do much more, but I think what we could do as a next step is to sort of consider, well, that's fairly, fairly dramatic. What can they possibly do? We've got reserves, got some artillery. We've got a few little units over here. Basically, I think the, the thing to do would be to just run away. And we've got this little stack, but what's he going to do? He's, he's not going to get. By the time he gets to the picnic, all the lemonade will have gone. So I think the only thing that we could possibly do is to somehow pull the artillery back to some kind of defensible position, which is going to be difficult. So we could sort of pull these into here to try and form a line like that. Pushing him back to form a line like that. Trying to push these further forward, probably to about their maximum. Maximum, possibly. Pushing the artillery back to about there. And then pushing these into Manjib to create a line like that. Pushing these down here to form that line so you can go there and you can go there. But it's so weak, and then these ones obviously just come up the road. These ones will probably, probably not be able to do much at all. They just don't stand a chance. But we've got this artillery, so what's what? Well, I think the thing to do is somehow push this artillery back. I think a nice defensible position will be here. So what's that? That's 1.9. So 
So we can get there. Let's do a function. And here, One thing I was just thinking about there was um, what you don't see a lot of in this Syrian conflict at any level really is a lot of air mobile units parachuting or helicopter landings. Which I find a bit odd considering you know the state of modern warfare, you would have thought that you know they might be you know cutting lines off, you know, putting in some paratroopers here or uh, mobile units here to block these roads, um, to block the escape from Manjib, you know, things of that nature to threaten, you know, these behind their lines. It always just seems to be brutal front, you know, front facing kinetic warfare, really. None of the um, maneuvering sort of stuff that you might expect. I'm only going to put three in there because I don't want to overstack anything. Okay, so here we've got some artillery. So let's just see what we can do with this guy. Right. Well, let's hit this stack first. This is the um, the hedgehog spines. How much damage can they do? One point six, three point six. Not a huge amount, but. Further into the aircraft as well. Yeah, exchange. So some bloody fighting outside of Manjib. Right here. Let's just pound this spearhead. These are some good results. 2.1, 4 4.2, 2, 4. 4.1, 6.3, okay. Well, I'll tell you that would be. 
almost worth attacking. See, this is the problem that they've got. Taking any sort of damages. Taking any sort of damage. And sort of holding with it. So do I want to push forward and assault that? Looking at uh, two, four, six, maybe eight. Let's go for it. It's a game. Let me do that. Oh well, I don't know. I didn't want to push the air into the aircraft forward, but uh, that was what I wanted. I've got an exchange. But we routed one of their units, which is, you know, for what it's worth, especially considering that Arena is not an objective, we've scored, you know, something against this assault. We've even closed that spearhead off, although they've made ground, it's certainly not what it was. We've got our artillery safely positioned. The artillery is relatively safely positioned here. But that's about it. I'm not going to go any further because I don't want to spend another sort of 20 minutes moving the FSA forward. But I think you obviously follow exactly the same logic. You know, I mean, it's just going to get swamped. Manjib is not going to survive. I mean, that's just the. We've got air power coming in. You know, there's not much in there, but we're just going to have all of this coming down. You know, it's just going to be. That's probably going to fall this turn. The question is, in this scenario, in this instance, is given this box, it's like a chess game. Given this box, can we get check in one move? You know, and I think the answer is constantly yes, because we can just move. So we've got so many options. You know, what can we get there? You know, can we push it in against that first? Do we need that? The only thing to say is the artillery is not well placed for that. If I'd moved it all there, I could have moved another one, two, three, and even then it would have been out of range. One, two, three, four, five. It's just not in range. The artillery is useless. It's in the wrong position. Um, so that's a bit of a bind. So it's just going to be the ground forces. So I'll Let me see what I can do. What's this? Oceans 3. So if I can destroy that, then I can just almost come straight down here and get the surround. So maybe this would be the first set of units to be try and push that. Forward, or we can maybe use this to try and come down and get this artillery. So, what I want to do maybe is, is three or four attacks against that. So, this is defense there. So, they're fresh. Fresh, fresh, fresh. So they're going to be at six, near eight. This one is going to be a walk through. They're at three, they're at three. So these are all threes. So they've been retreated. I think one of the keys is going to be this. So if we can bring him there. Huh. 
That's perfect. Eliminated. So, these are sort of stuffed, and it's got one loop, so they're all stuck. So all of these units now can move freely down to this sort of position. One, two, three, four. The whole. There doesn't seem to be any other way of doing that. Oh, there's just no way of doing it yet. Well, at least we can sort of stack up a bit. Okay, so this is the big attack on Manjit. Of course, whilst this is all going on, there'll be so much politics going on that World War Three might have been started. It would be quite irrelevant. The So we've taken Manjib. Mm, no depressions. They're not going to take it back. The question is, can we push them back? I don't want to try anything more. It's a shame you can get anything on that. I'm not going to do this because it's 12 minutes left. But, um, well, that was pretty interesting. We do have the Turkish air power. What could they do? Well, I'd hardly like you to route all this artillery, but considering they're there, it could be a start. Look at all that anti-aircraft. Not much against the artillery, but it's a start. I don't need any more than that though, it's just a quick reflection on I would like to do this, but I just don't want to commit the time with the more real. And then that would be a little scenario and it's going right. But we've got Manjib. I mean the thing is I think, you know. In the light of what's happening, it's not necessarily a particularly um, accurate scenario. It's a year old. I think it's probably quite quickly put together. Um, I think if I was to maybe review it, we'd put in maybe maybe some um, YPG irregular units. Maybe maybe not. Um, but I think almost certainly some. Um, anti-tank capability because I think that's sort of fairly evident in what's happening. I mean, even back then, 
but especially now they've probably got quite a lot of anti-tank capability um, which would be a bit of a pain um, and possibly they'll have to maybe do a bit of reading on this but US air support you know you've got to say well would that happen and if it is happening are there Turkish units here because it says that Turkish units are now are, um, you know, are, are building up but quite often it's a bit it's a bit unclear as to whether they're Turkish units or Turkish backed units um, but, you know because otherwise you end up if the Americans had air power in there they would have air power fighting US units US Air Force attacking Turkish units on the ground and of course they're both part of NATO so it all starts to get a bit odd this is why I don't think that this manager build-up is going to do anything other than force a political resolution of one form or another maybe it's sort of you know the, the YPG you know will make efforts to remove certain elements whether they're PKK elements or other more aggressive militants or maybe there are other things happening you know people smuggling you know arms smuggling you know general sort of things things that the Turkish don't want happening because this is all part of that was it Operation Euphrates or something or something shield to protect the northern border and you know, it's probably that that's sort of driving it to some extent um, but it's interesting really to sort of you know just sort of reflect on the whole Syrian situation because you've still got half of Syria north of the Euphrates held in, 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 in large parts of northern area held by this YPG to the extent that you've got to consider at what point will it become its own country and that was one of the things that always sort of found a bit peculiar about the whole Syrian civil war thing is that you could end up with a new country you know is that what's going to happen here you know do they have to keep the pressure on to not allow that to happen I mean, you've had the Golan Heights occupied now for decades um, you know what what is the official state of these parts of northern Syria are they officially recognized as Syrian territory is Syrian occupied territory well, I guess I could look it up but you know that's the sort of thing that we're looking at here and you know all, all eyes are on the Islamic Caliphate whereas the result was actually not too far different you know a new country formed by these sort of Kurdish people um, etc etc so there'll probably be some sort of political outcome to it um, yeah so that was it I didn't mean to go on for 53 minutes as ever but um, definitely interesting I'm not going to make any changes to it I think I don't have time really but um, I think you know we could possibly copy this over give it a 2019 title I might actually do that um, and, and then just reorganize things slightly, putting in some Turkish units and some US units, the anti tank and stuff like that if I've got a few minutes. But I've, my spare few minutes today has just been spent with people in the video. And uh, you know, time is just so tight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't have any ever. So it's no wonder I can get anything done. But you've got to have a break now, now and then. So, um, that's it, and hopefully that break doesn't involve spending hours playing Civ, free Civ, because that is a waste of time. You know, that's a frustrating waste of time. But at least on this, I've got a video, you know, for all that's worth. And I do look at my videos, I think, God, oh, that was me talking like two years ago, and it's sort of like, hmm, well, I don't have a photograph album, but I've certainly got a large YouTube collection of videos of me, you know. Doing stuff and you sort of think, oh, hang on, I don't remember any of that, but it's all there in video. You can listen to it and watch it. The only thing you can't do is see me. But I found that it's sort of it's, it's interesting, really, because you realise what it's all about. But it's interesting, and you sort of think, oh, that's interesting, and it's interesting to hear what I'm saying, or I find it interesting to hear what I'm saying. Not that it's inherently interesting, but you can follow it, and you can sort of, you know, and quite often following it, you say, well, hang on, I should have done this, or I should have done that, or what about this huge gap here, or, you, you know, it's, it's not a sort of, 
a, a set of videos, I think, upon reflection, small blink here, that have no particular direction or sense. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of videos. It doesn't make, I'm not trying to say they're better or superior, but it, it feels as though there's something more significant that will make them worth watching in a few years' time, for me at least. Um, but in general, you know, and a lot of people are making videos, I don't want to start something things off, but a lot of people are making videos and they're very sort of contemporary and very sort of, oh, I'm so upset at Trump and, um, you, you know, he, his hair is falling off or something like this. And, you know, it's just sort of reactionary commentary that is really just a platform for making a video and for broadcasting and expressing the, the creator's self. And, and I think, you know, it becomes more apparent um, as opposed to other things. And this formula is so, and I do see it as a formula, you know, you make a game, you play it, but, you know, other people, they play games and, you know, all sorts of games, old games, new games, but they, there's no direction to them, especially when they're, you know, ahistoric, even if they're based on historic things, you know, you know, the Second World War or Napoleonic campaigns, and some of them, when they're based on historic things, are more time, um, not sensitive, but they're more, they maintain their, um, a credibility over time, you know, they, they become more timeless. That's what I'm trying, the word I'm trying to get to. I and mean, this is timeless in a certain sense, um, but you know, the essence of it is, is is also timeless because the logic is the same. You, you, you know, you can look at what I've done there. You can look at that scenario. You can look at the odds and make calculations. Um, you know, you can look at the color patterns and you can see things, and that's not going to change. Um, you know, between now and five years' time. Um, so that's that really, and I'll, um, I'll speak to you later. Cheerio, bye.